one of the Dwarf Fortress tutorial series. Now, we're going to start off with the super duper basics here, which is how to acquire the game, how to get your hands on some dwarfy goodness. And it is super simple. Find your way to Google on your preferred browser of choice and enter in the Lazy Noob Pack. Now, even without putting in Dwarf Fortress, it knows what it is. You're going to want this Bay 12 Forums one here, the Paradix's Errant DF Starter Pack. Bring it to this forum post here. Get your latest starter pack. Nice link brings you to this. Small little download button at the top here. And then you can open that or just save the file. Now, even if you have some dial up level satellite Wi Fi internet, you will get this game pretty quickly. It is fairly insubstantial, only 203 megabytes. While that ticks down there, I'm just going to grab a drink. Now then, as it's downloading, just wait for that. Awesome, so we already have the game. So we're going to click on the containing folder here. This is my massive amount of downloads. Bring this file to my desktop so you can see what I'm doing and what we're getting. Get rid of that now. We don't need that. We don't need the internet. Done with those. And using your extractor of choice, I like 7-zip, but a lot of people will be using WinRAR. We're just going to extract here, just drag everything out of that onto my desktop. Now, it will get a little bit messy if you're a clean freak like me and you normally just, I normally tuck everything in one folder at the top. You're going to get a few different folders chucked out here. So you can hide all these again in one folder afterwards if you want, but this should show you exactly what you're getting from uh, your download here. Shouldn't take too much longer background. Guessing that means I can throw that to the background, but it doesn't matter. We're nearly done. Awesome. So there we are. We have the game and it's installed. So first thing, this here is our launcher. You could go into the actual Dwarf Forest thing here and I'm sure the actual core game is in there somewhere, but we don't need that. What we want to click on is this cool icon here, the LNP, the Start Pack Launcher. And this will bring up a handy dandy interface here. Uh, nope, we're going to turn off automatic updates just because uh, that's fine. Normally I enable that, but for the sake of uh, keeping everything consistent on this tutorial session, we're not going to bother. So, this is the lazy new pack. This is not the game itself, this is the launcher. And from here, we're going to want to set up a couple of things before we get started. So, population cap of 200. I'm going to knock this down for the sake of the tutorial series to 100 to keep the fort nice and uh, a little bit smaller. Visitor cap, the strict population cap, and invaders. We're going to leave all, all that as it is. The child cap ratio basically means if I had a thousand dwarves, a hundred of them would be allowed to be children. So of my 100 dwarves, I should have more than, no more than 10 children. Doesn't always work out that way. I'm not 100% sure why. The rest of us, we're going to leave as is. Cave-ins, if you were to mine out literally an entire floor, it would fall on you and kill everything inside. That's just how just how gravity works. We want the temperature. Tomb pets. Aquifers, these are a pain, but we're going to leave them on. Artifacts and weather, both on, yes. Leave all that as it is. So, graphics. This one is fine, but uh, for me personally, I prefer this 32-bit one. It just makes these sprites just a little bit bigger. And honestly, I just quite like those graphics. We want liquid depth, verified ground, all that good stuff we're going to leave as it is. Utilities, none of these will work right now because we haven't launched the game. Advanced. Uh, auto save. yes, we want that on seasonal. So that I've, if every uh, quarter of a year, the game will save itself. Now, if you're... Um, some people don't like that because they want to reload their file and do save scummy stuff, but we're not too concerned about that. The game cr can crash from time to time, especially after an update if there's uh, some bugs and what have you. So we want that save four times a year. DF hack options, we're not going to bother with any of these yet. Brand new players might want to go for automatic job assignments. I prefer doing it uh, manually on Dwarf Therapist, which I will show you once we're in the game. So now that we've got all that sorted, we are going to play Dwarf Fortress. 
And uh, I have two monitors, so it has thrown itself across both. I'll drag it back up here. Let this intro play through. Amazing graphical quality here, guys. And a little bit of foreshadowing. Oh, and the dwarf's burned his face off. That's just what happens when you dig through magma. So, here's our screen. And right now, we have really only one option, which is to create a new world. The game, of course, programmed by Tarn Adams, designed by Tarn and Zach. They are a pair of brothers, and they have done this entirely from scratch, and it is absolutely incredible what this game will do. More of it happens in the background than in the fore, especially with things like creating a world, which is what we're going to do now. Now this is just loading up the tile set, but thankfully um, once we get into the game we'll have tiles that are a little bit nicer than the ASCII. So welcome to the Alpha of Dwarf Fortress, as there has been some time between releases, instability is to be expected, report crashes, hangs, yada yada yada. Essentially the game is in perpetual alpha, and it's one guy doing it. So these are our world settings, world size we're going to keep it medium, history we're going to go for short. Number of civilizations we want on high. I would like to have some neighbors to interact with. Uh, rest of us we're going to leave on medium. Normally I put the beasts and savagery up to high, but for the sake of the tutorial world, we're going to leave those as they are. Press Y, and we are now generating a world. This is literally from the center of the world, from the very core outwards, generating an entire planet. And it's called the Planets of Legend, which is pretty dope. And it's placing within that planet, forming rivers and uh, lakes by some kind of mathematical wizardry that uh, Tarn has put in here, which is mind-boggling amounts of work. Now, as you can see on the map there, everything is represented by just uh, keyboard characters. But once we get into the fort itself, because of the graphics pack we've picked, we will have... Um, Something a little bit more friendly on the eyes, and not something that looks like somebody ate and then vomited a keyboard onto your screen. There we are. Looks like we've uh, we've got a world now. It's just dropping things everywhere, and then oh nope, it's rejected them. So you see at the top, it's created new region. Still the planets of legend, but we have rejected 18 worlds that were just impossible. I'm not sure how it defines what is impossible, but essentially it gets to a certain point and decides the world is no good and just rejects it out of hand and starts again. I was playing Dwarf Fortress just a couple of days ago, and I, um, I air quotes, I won, which you, you can't do. You can't win Dwarf Fortress. There is, no, there is no win state. But I managed to establish a fortress with over 50 military dwarves, all in full masterwork steel gear, and or artifact weaponry and uh, armor and I destroyed the goblin civilization wiped them out killed them off entirely and so I decided maybe I might have learned enough to pass on to some newer players because I know this game has one hell of a learning curve and there we are we are now generating the uh, was it the planet of legends you see there the years get much slower as time advances if you were to um, set like a very long history you would have to like walk away and do some chores before you could come back and uh, use your world we can pause this at any point so if I decide that I am bored and I just wanna get in with the game as I'm gonna do in just a sec here when we get to maybe like 70 years you can just press uh, enter or escape to start your game not yet I think we're gonna do that now There's plenty of things going on in this world and I like a nice early world so we still have some crazy ancient monsters so we are going to press U to use this world as it currently exists and then enter to accept it's now going to um, confirm that world, export it off into a file that we can load up and play within I'll just take just a sec here now I'm not sure if this is still true but I remember at one point um, Dwarf Fortress because of the way it's coded will only ever use one of your cores so you could have a 64 core absolute monster of a machine and Dwarf Fortress just picks one core that it really really likes and runs everything through that one core. So 
as uh, as good as the game is, you will have uh, reduced performance on this versus what you would expect to get. But it does also do a lot, a lot of background stuff. So there we are. World is created. We're now going to start playing. I'm gonna play Dwarf Fortress. We will do adventure mode at the end once I've learned how to play adventure mode. We'll do a tutorial on that, but right now I have no idea how to do that. So it's just loading everything up. There is going to be like a, a two week thing. Time in this game does matter because the seasons do change, the weather changes, and you get um, regular caravans from your homeland and mi regular waves of uh, migrants to your colony. Now we will start out with just seven dwarves, and we will start out where we choose. So you could, if you were so inclined, just move your little yellow cursor there in the middle map all around until you found a place you like. You see everything that is uh, displayed on the right hand side telling you like, what is in the tile you've picked. Now you could do this forever and eventually you, you probably would find what you were looking for. You can see we have three maps and the one on the left, the little tiny map, is the actual four tiles that we would embark on. But Ain't nobody got time for that. So what we're going to do is press the F key and we're going to define some conditions and have the, the AI search for it for us. So we don't care about savagery or evil. I'm going to put in some conditions here that might got not get met, but they would make a nice and easy starting fortress. So we want high temperature. We want no aquifer. We would like a river. We would like shallow and deep metals and a layer of flux stone. I don't think we're going to get this, but this would be as easy as a start as I could imagine. And if we do find this, we'll embark here. And if we don't, we will find, um, you know, we'll just define the conditions again. Maybe find something without the extra layer of metals. The reason I've requested all that stuff, one, if we run out of alcohol, which isn't super likely because dwarves can make alcohol or just about anything we can drink river water but also we can use that for um hospitals flux stone is combined with iron to allow you to make steel and shallow and deep metals are exactly what they say on the tin hot temperature means that the river won't freeze over but we can't have that it's just not possible so we're going to press escape none of those locations have been found so what we're going to do instead is press f to clear the search results We'll press F to search again. See, it's saved what we had. And I think what we're going to do, we will throw away deep metals and we'll put the temperature back to medium. This is much more likely to be found. Uh, we've actually put the deep metals to none instead of NA. So it's actually searching for a place with shallow metal but without deep metal. What I'm actually going to do is stop that search here. And we're going to redefine it again to NA on deep metals. That way it will just ignore them in the search. If it's actively searching to avoid them, we're just making the conditions harder for a worse start. Which you can be done. You can do challenge runs if you like. Not something I do too, uh, too much of. I did do the um, what I think is a fairly common challenge run, which is to start with just seven dwarves but not allow anyone to migrate to your colony. And just try and last as long as you can with seven dwarves. I lasted quite a long time until one of my dwarves went insane and ran around naked, and he just upset so upset everyone else so much that uh, the, the fortress kind of just died out. Okay, so you can see on the map, we found quite a few locations here. So we're going to press escape, we're going to search our results, and we can move around on the little tile at the top there, this is all mountains, so we can't actually embark here. But uh, following our little yellow cursor, we're going to check these locations over. So we have a temperate area here, but it's um, it's all mountains again. I think we're gonna we're gonna leave this continent here, and we're gonna try looking over here in some of these other places. See what we have. Okay, we have a warm place here, a warm woodland, but that has an aquifer. We're not gonna deal with an aquifer in this. Uh, first tutorial for we may do a series on how to deal with aquifers but uh, for right now we're just gonna try and learn the basics looks like we might have some kind of uh, desert here we have warm there's not many trees there's not much vegetation there is a stream 
There is some sand, there's little soil, shallow metals and fluxstone. I think we're going to embark here, surrounded by untamed wilds. Now we can get a bit more of a detailed look on where we're embarking. If we press tab, we get different lists. So we are surrounded by dwarves, humans, goblins and elves. The red dashed line indicates that we are currently at war with goblins. Um, our civilization, it's not massively important. It can affect what you can um, embark with, but we're not... Um, yeah, it th should be fine. I don't usually uh, go picking too much. The elevation here looks like we're going to have some slight elevation. And yeah, we're, we are embarking to the Hori Dune, a sand desert. So we're going to press E to embark. We have not selected an area with an aquifer. The detection can um, be a little bit... Um, sensitive like if you embark next to the ocean it will tell you that you've embarked with salt water even if you haven't so it can it's a little bit cautious but we are going to prepare carefully for the journey so these are our starting seven dwarves now skills there are only two people I'm going to invest anything in for skills and that is my miners because we need to get done quickly these other guys I'm going to assign them jobs once we get there and they can skill up from peasant by just doing their jobs so I'm going to press tab again, and we're going to come in here. So, we know that we don't have many trees, so we're not going to need two of these battle axes. They're actually used for um, chopping down the trees. We have an iron anvil here, which we're going to keep hold of. We have a bunch of different foods, seeds, and other things. But, these step ladders and wheelbarrows, these are massively expensive. We can get a lot of points for just getting rid of those and the crutches. We'll keep the buckets, just in case. But we now have... We've gained... A bunch of points. Now, think of your points as currency, essentially. You can use this uh, pre-game currency to purchase animals, purchase equipment, and purchase training for your dwarves before we set off. Now, what do we want from this? Well, we want cats. And there's a good reason for that. Cats will hunt vermin in your stockpiles. And if you don't have cats, vermin will just kind of wander into your stockpile of food and help themselves to it. Also, later on, when cats multiply animals breed and once they've bred an absolute ton we can actually start just you know butchering them down for uh, meat and leather which is kind of morbid but hey ho something else we're going to bring are two female pigs and a male pig the reason for that being we can milk these but also they can live underground because pigs will eat absolutely anything i imagine they're literally just living off the scraps the bones and whatever else the dwarves deem fit to uh, throw in there with them just general slop so those are great animals to bring and finally another renewable food source that we're going to bring with us are chickens so we're going to bring 10 hens and one rooster they aren't that many points that's 66 points which we got basically most of just for putting back a wheelbarrow so you can see we still have an absolute ton of points and what are we going to spend that on well we're going to spend it on some resources so over here in the item section we're going to press n we're going to get something new and something I do like to do, just to bring with me, I like to bring a nice weapon and shield, just in case the... Oh, that's, that's real expensive. But luckily, copper shields will give us just as much protection as iron, and they're super cheap. So we're going to bring a nice copper shield. And then we're going to come down here to weapons. And we're not going to get anything obscene. We're just going to get a nice, cheap old weapon. Where were weapons? I, can, uh, I always skip over things in this. There they are. They're all the way up here. So let's see what we can get that's uh, not super expensive. Silver actually makes really good um, blunt weapons. But I think we are going to just go for a copper spear. There we are. So now we have, if we need it, a weapon and shield for a dwarf to train with and then hopefully use to defend us. We still have 216 points. Now, plump helmets here. Plump helmets spawn. These are like the wonder food of Dwarf Fortress. They are renewable because they are mushrooms, so after you've processed them, you get the mushroom spawns back, and you can then replant them. So we're going to bring a hundred of these. That's another hundred points that we're spending on a renewable food source. But it's not infinite. Sometimes processing them doesn't always give you the stuff back. We still have 120 points. So we're going to get some, you know, these food sources will be just generic, whatever, but we're going to get some prepared deer heart going to go up to 50 of that, and then we're going to finish off by just buying a bunch of Dwarven Ale. And then why not, we will get one more Plump Helmet. So there we go, there's all our points spent. We have two pretty good miners. 
The rest of these guys will pick up their skills when we assign them to them. But now the important things, the names. So we're going to press Shift F to bring up our fortress names. Lash Praise. Now I'm not a ma Lashes Praise. That's just, I'm not a fan of that. So we're going to press R to randomize. Ward Banner. Mm, that's okay, but we'll go again. Tool Paints. Revered Ring. You know, I think we're going to go with that. The Fortress of Revered Ring. And then Shift G to name the group. We are the Hairy Fences. I don't think that's true. The Waxy Theater. The Grey Mechanisms. The Portals of Branding. The Watchful Walls. We'll go with the Watchful Walls. And there we are. So we are ready to go. We have everything. And that's it. We press E. We embark. And we head off into the deserts. These new desert dwelling dwarves. You have arrived. After a long journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond, your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all Raphimoshab. Yeah, good luck saying that. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance, whether by bolt, plow, or hook. Provide for your dwarves. You're expecting a supply caravan just before winter. Uh, just before winter entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings, ere the dingoes get hungry. A new chapter of dwarven history begins here, at this place. Ebalathel. Revered ring. Strike the earth. And strike we will. But first, we're going to have a look around. Now, you can use your mouse to point around and look at things, zoom in and out. But most of Dwarf Fortress, you will be playing with keys. So I'm just going to banish my uh, mouse onto the second screen there. We're going to press spacebar to pause the game. And we are going to uh, have a look around our surroundings. So it looks like we actually got a twin biome here. Looks like we've got some uh, mild woodlands up there. And we have our sandy desert down here. Now, there's our stream. We are going to have to build a bridge over that at some point. Ooh, oh, oh, oh we need to be careful. We have crocogators. Now these things will eat our dwarves, they will eat our animals. So I think one of the first things we're going to do is uh, a huge reptile found in rivers and marshlands. It's an ambush predator, uh, predator, solitary and territorial. She is incredibly skinny, her scales are grey, her eyes are black. Well, we need to be careful of those. Definitely, 100% need to be careful of those. But let's check what animals we actually brought with us. So pets and livestock. We got a yak bull and a, a two humped camel. Can't do much with those. And then we have the stuff that we bought. And we have our seven citizens here. So, first thing we're going to do. I'm going to press tab. I'm going to get rid of the list of keys for now. And then we'll bring them back up in a moment. We're going to have a look and decide where we want to start our fortress. Definitely don't want to start too near those crocodiles. Looks like we have bees on the map. That's another renewable uh, source of uh, food and alcohol that I can show you how to use later. But for now... I think we are just going to start by doing two things. One is we're going to press D to designate. Now, your two main keys for doing anything in this game are D and B. D is designate, that's when you want something done. And B is for building, which is when you want something built. So D, will, because we're on the ground layer, it will start off auto-designating T for chop down trees. But that's not what we want right now. We want J for downstairs. And we are just going to press enter once over one tile, we're going to go up two and across two with the uh, number keys on the far right side where you have your little numpad, it's much easier to use that set of keys than it is the ones across the top, and then we're going to press enter again, and that's going to designate a 3x3 three three block that the miners will dig out. Now then, that on its own, pretty useless. So what we're going to do is we're going to press shift and less than to go down a key. So shift greater than, shift less than, we'll go up and down keys. So we're going to go down one, we're going to press designate, and we're going to press I for up downstairs. We're going to make sure we're still aligned, yes we are. Press enter once, we're going to go down and right two with the three key on that number pad, and then we're actually going to go down to floor 10, which you can see indicated just on the right side of the screen here, just wiggle my mouse over that there. That's the floor we're going to dig down to, and because we've went down those, each floor between there has received those orders to do the up and down things. Now then, for this next bit, we're going to need to bring up our Dwarf Fortress Dwarf Therapist program. So this is going to connect, it's going to read our dwarves. As you can see, it's already assigned. Ah, that's fine. These are some of my old uh, custom things. So what we're going to do is we have our two miners, but we're going to need a woodcutter. So I'm going to ignore my professions here. 
for now. I'll show you how to set up custom ones later. But we're just going to give uh, English here all of the wood related stuff except wood crafting. So they will make bows, they will do carpentry, and they will cut down wood. That will be important later. Well, it'll be important now because we're going to chop down trees and we're going to try and just get a nice safe harbour built to start off. Now, we're going to press enter again to start the zone, same as when we were doing the stairs, but I'm going to press shift and my arrow keys here. And we're actually going to go down because I noticed that river might actually drown our dwarves. And you can't see what I've done there because most of it was off screen. But everything in that area, see how this one black tile on the four wide tree? Every tree in that area will now be cut down by our lumber dwarf there. Just make sure I have actually uh, committed those changes. Yes, I have. So the dwarves have started their work. I've pressed space again to unpause it. And the, uh, the miners are on the way down. You can see the flashing uh, arrow there, flashing on the tree. He is gonna drop that tree and each tree will give us multiple logs. The bigger the tree, the more the logs. And once he's done, just a little bit there. What I'm actually going to order done is I'm going to show you how to build because I'm going to start off building a bridge. So, remember B brings up our build list. I think it's then C, or Shift C for this miscellaneous extra menu here. And we're going to want a floor. Nothing super fancy. I think we're going to build our bridge here. We're going to use the keys displayed on the bottom to change it. So U and M for the height, K and H for the width. And we're just going to want a two tile wide bridge there. We are going to build it out of this Cigarro rib. In fact, no, trees are quite rare here, and the dwarves down there are already uncovering stone. So we're going to use that. So build, big C here. We're going to go for flooring again with F. Use K to extend it out, U to extend it up by one. And we are going to use diorite for our bridge. Now, the dwarves who have nothing selected, they aren't masons, but they do have furniture hauling. So they'll be able to go down there and pick up those stones. Now they do move incredibly slowly while doing that, but that's fine because we don't have too much to do right now. This is going to keep people busy and it's going to accomplish something while we're at it. Now you see that you haven't actually um, dug out everything, but we can have a look down here. So we go down a couple of levels and we're at the stone. So it looks like diorite's our early stone. That's fine. It's just your basic grey stone. Normally if I were building structures, I would want to... Um, Make it out of stone blocks, which have been quarried and processed, not just rough stone like this. But we have a river here, which we could drown in, and we definitely don't want, um, you know, we don't want to get dropped in there with the the crocodiles, because they will absolutely destroy us. Oh, where have they gone? So we can zoom to them here. They're moving around the map. I don't like that. Really, really don't like that. They are up a tile from us, up a level. There we are. Our bridge is done. We now have access to the other side of the map. That's honky dory. Is our digging done? Yes, it is. What do we have here? What is that? Galena. Is Galena an orable thing? Let's find out. So we're going to designate just some upstairs there. That's going to be the bottom of our first stairwell. Looks like we aren't going to find out. I'm sure Galena is like silver. So there we go. We're going to press K. This will bring up the look menu. We're going to hover over this Galena here. And press enter. And yes. So Galena will give us silver and lead. 50% of silver and then lead. Now that's not a brilliant material. Because we can't make armor out of silver. But we can make weapons. And we will. But we're going to first build our fortress. We're going to do this on floor 5. Far enough down that we're entirely in stone not far enough down that um, yeah, not far enough down that uh, it's going to take too long to move up and down here we're going to do a nice simple corridor and then we're going to use the plus and minus keys over on our keyboard to prioritize what gets done so the first thing we're going to do is dig out that nice simple corridor then we are going to build a two wide doorway and then a 10 wide 20 back massive room there that is going to be our first storeroom, and it is just going to be a generic storeroom. Then they're going to extend the corridor. Then they are going to build these rooms here, which will be five tiles wide. 
by five tiles wide. Now, I'll explain what all these are for later. I imagine the uh, veterans of Dwarf Fortress already know. We're then going to just add some corridors through these and link these up to the uh, main thing there. And finally, on number seven, all of these are priorities. So they'll do everything on four first, then everything on five, then everything on six. We are going to build another room, which I'll uh, build for you now which we want to be two wider than the corridor and then we're just going to throw up these uh, little extra bits on and that will uh, that will end up being our first real room in the fortress for the dwarves to actually live that's going to just be a basic dormitory with some tables on it. But that is the start of our fortress. We're going to unpause now. The dwarves will come down and start mining it out. This is why I um, invested points into the miners. Because they're going to have a lot to do. But they're not going to be the only ones. Because we are going to be using the galena that these guys... Sorry, the... Uh, what is this? Is this diorite? I think this was diorite. Yeah, we're going to be using the diorite that these guys are uncovering as they go. Which they get more of for the higher their skill level. We're going to be using that to build walls pretty soon here, but not until we have a mason who can smooth it out. Okay, so, they're going to get on with that. Let's go check on the surface, because I was going to save animal stuff for after... Ooh, ooh they are definitely working their way towards us. So, what we're going to do is... Right, okay. I know what we're going to do. We're going to build, see, floor. Now, these floors aren't actually here to be bridges, but we do need them for one quick thing, which is so that we can build walls off of them later. Well, basically now, because we're going to start walling ourselves in to keep those crocodiles away. Um, put one slate on there as well. Now, normally... This is something I would save for much later in the game. But I want to just uh, get that up as soon as possible. At least a partial wall to uh, keep the crocodiles away. Now, we'll probably end up um, dismantling this later to replace with a better wall. But for now, it will uh, serve its purpose. And like I said, any dwarf can build these types of structures, the walls and floors. So you don't need a stone mason to build a stone wall. Any old dwarf can lug up some bricks. But with dangerous wildlife in the area, even that turtle over there will murder us. That is an alligator snapping turtle. Once they've built the uh, the bridge over the water there, we can use that to build some more wall. And by the time that's done, we should have uh, uncovered some more diorite that we can actually use. Yeah, we're uncovering that as we go. You can see they're following the... I don't think they have followed the priorities, because they've done the entire tunnel already. Well, that's fine, as long as they... Looks like they're sticking to it for the most part. And let's uh, have another look at these gators here. We really want to be keeping an eye on this. What I'm doing here, I'm pressing U to bring up the units screen. Using uh, 4 and 6 to jump across to other, which will bring us to these wild animals. And then Z to zoom to them. Looks like they're still wandering around the map. One tile level above us. And we're going to go B again. C. Wall. And we're going to... Add this bit across the river here. How much diorite do we have? We have 23, okay. So we're going to also start building it up this way. And this is just going to keep our dwarves nice and busy. If uh, logs weren't as rare as they are in this zone, 
I might actually have done this out of wood. Because we can build a bigger wall outside of this one later instead of tearing it down. This can just be our uh, our inner walls. We're also going to have to uh, make sure our dwarves don't wander too close to those crocodiles. They will get hungry. And they will, uh, they will attack us if we get close. But this, uh, this wall should at least block line of sight so that they don't uh, just come running at us straight away. Now, how is down here going? Okay, so this is going to be our stockpile when it's dug out, which is why I'm waiting for it to be dug out before we do anything with it, because we don't want to um, designate it now before it's done and have to uh, redo it after. So we're going to build some more of our wall here, and we're going to leave a gap for a door. Because this is just going to be an interior interior thing. We don't want to be okay. We don't want to be uh, locking ourselves in, and we don't really have what we need to build any real like big defensible drawbridges or what have you. This is just going to be a nice, super simple. Oh, I think what you can see there is something being eaten by either an alligator or a snapping turtle. Let's press R for the report. The pike is fighting. It looks like a, a sea lamprey was preying on it. That is uh, basically what those crocodiles are going to do to us, given the chance. In fact, I think they're alligators. I keep calling them crocodiles, but it's fine. But we can press K here and have a look. Pike teeth. Looks like the pike's teeth were uh, destroyed. And the way we bring that screen up is to press R for reports. The pike is still fighting. Looks like its internal organs have been damaged and it's just vomiting in the water. That's that's fine. That's we drink from there, but that's that's okay. Nobody nobody minds that, right? No one rides a bit of vomit in the water. I mean, the fish are already peeing in it, so it, it's it's pretty bad. Nearly ready to bring all of our supplies down here, because birds will actually like birds and small animals will steal stuff from our supply cart while it's still on the surface. So once um. Once this supply room's dug out, we're going to build a custom stockpile and just drag absolutely everything downstairs. Awesome, so there we are. They're going to start working on our initial workshops next, but we have other things to do. So we're going to press P for stockpile, we're going to press C for custom, and then we're going to press T to define what goes in this. So we're going to want caged animals, food, furniture and siege ammo. We don't want corpses, we don't want refuse, and we don't want stone. We're going to enable everything else. So if we have it, it's in this stockpile unless it's stone or body parts, essentially. And then we're going to, again, 20 by 10, so shift across once and shift down twice. That is that area now defined as a stockpile. When we unpause, you'll see our idlers in the top has gone from 5 to 0, they and probably the miners will now spend a while just dragging literally everything from our cart down into the stockpile, including the wood that the uh, woodcutter has chopped down. But we do have other things that we're going to be doing pretty soon as well. We're off to a pretty decent start here. I would like to get some workshops set up before the end of uh, episode 1 of this tutorial. Just, uh, again, press U, cross to other. It looks like the alligators have left. That's really good. That means we can really, um, we can ease back on the wall that we've been building. Don't have to worry as much about that for now, which means we can focus more down here on our fortress. We're just waiting on all of these uh, areas to be dug out because these are going to be our workshops. And the reason I built them 5x5 five five, you'll be able to see pretty shortly here. Our, uh, you can see there, we can press K and hover over these items. You can see we have our anvil, our shields down here and our spear. Now we haven't decided who's going to do what yet. But we are going to have a look because we now have our craft rooms ready. So, 
let's press spacebar here and who do we have left who we haven't assigned a job to so English Zon and Zulban are spoken for let's take a look at who would make good crafters so Dobek here Dobek everything is so much easier when you just tell the truth that's his current thoughts felt euphoric due to inebriation was insulted dwelling upon getting into an argument so this guy is not uh, not happy drank without a goblet cup or mug we're gonna sort that out pretty soon and audit the lack of chairs drinking yeah, he's, he's just generally not doing too well he appears to be 83 years old and is one of the first of his kind that means this guy was bo uh, born before we started recording time you know so we are in the air I think we're in like the s68 and let's see what does he desire uh, let's see uh, somewhat satisfied needs level honey unfocus after being unoccupied I don't see that this guy has any massive ambitions, so we might keep him. I'm going to press V again to view this one. Enter for thoughts and preferences. And 83 years old again. Very agile, very tough. Currently more confident. Okay. Well, I'm not seeing what I'm looking for off the top of my head here. So what we're going to do, we're just going to choose at random. So we're taking a bit too long, but you can um, find the preferences of your dwarves and who wants to create things. But what we want, we're going to want a mason. We already have our wood woodworker here, but we're also going to want a third dwarf who has the crafting, stone crafting, and I believe along here somewhere we should see bone carving. So we now have our crafter and our mason. So we're going to press B for our build command, W for workshop, and we want three right away. We want W, no we don't, we want C for carpenters. We do want W, but not right now. We're going to build out a diorite. We want R for crafters. Out a diorite again, and we want M for masons. The reason we're putting those in the center of the room, you see the darker green tiles are actually harder to walk across. And if the workshop has a bunch of things in it, then it's also harder to walk across. So this just means people can walk around the workshops nice and easily. And I just, I find it looks a little bit nicer. So everyone has a lot to do right now. They're currently running around... Uh, bringing everything down and then the guys who we've just assigned those skills to who were uh, English, Dobok and Desmere so we still have Vobok and Logum without jobs we'll see to those guys pretty soon don't you worry so once they're done ah, you see the first one is being done already that is our craft stuff's workshop Looks like they're building the carpenters as well. Masons is going to take a hot minute. But we're going to allow the dwarves to bring everything down before we issue them any more commands. You can see the uh, the two miners there have basically just gotten drunk and fallen asleep in the stockpile. We are A-OK -okay with that, to be honest. Now, we are actually going to build a wall here. We should have really left that unmined, but I uh, kind of forgot, so... We'll have to rebuild that, but it's fine. Doors need adjacent walls to be attached to. And when we build doors for that dormitory, we're going to uh, need walls to attach them to. So we're still bringing everything down. That is going to take them a while. They're basically going up five flights of stairs to that uh, little corridor, that little wagon, sorry, bringing everything down. Or they're running out and grabbing all of the wood. So we're going to press U again, go to animals here, just keep an eye out, make sure that there's still no uh, crocogators out here that are going to want to eat us, which there isn't, thankfully. And you're going to do a lot of this in Dwarf Forest, you're going to give a lot of orders and then spend a long time waiting to see them run to fruition. That's just kind of how it goes. See, even our miners are in on uh, bringing all this stuff down. I do believe there are ways you can uh, speed up Dwarf Fortress, but I tend not to use it because you will uh, you will slow down over time anyway, especially once you have 10 hundred uh, dwarves, cats and chickens running around. Now the miners are nearly done. So that's going to be pretty good. Or 
awesome. We do have one more job for them though, which is just off of the stockpile here. We're gonna build two rooms. We're gonna build a long room there, and then off of this room, we're gonna build one more. These are going to be for our pigs and chickens. Now they might look quite small, but that is fine. They don't need too much room right now. We're trying to keep everything... Normally I would spread these out over more levels. I would have the pigs and chickens up in the um, farming level, but we're uh, going to try and keep things a little bit simpler in this tutorial series. I'm going to try and show you as many mechanics as I can. Okay, we have one idler, which leads me to believe people are just not doing their jobs. Yep, there we are. Because we have not brought all of our supplies down here yet. Let's actually go check up on the surface here. Looks like we're down to just bringing, uh, bringing the wood in, actually. So we might be nearly done. Okay, so the miners are done. Looks like a lot of the um, basic layout is done. So we are now going to start engaging our workshops in what they need to do. The idlers are there. So we're going to pause it. We're going to press Q to queue up some works to be done. Most of this is going to be done from our mason and craftswolf workshop because this world that we're in currently has a lack of wood. So we're going to try and use the carpentry sparingly. But we are still going to need it because we can only make our beds from wood. We are just going to press A to add a new task and we're going to press B over and over again. Each workshop in the early stage of the game can store up to 10 requests. So we're going to request 10 beds. In the Craft Dwarfs workshop, we're going to want a few things. We're going to want rock crafts. We're going to put that on repeat. This will just make rock trade goods so that we can trade with our parent civilization when they show up. We are going to want oh, rock mugs. And you navigate this menu with the plus and minus keys to go up and down. As you saw when we looked in our dwarves' noggins, they were unhappy about the lack of mugs, so we're going to build some. And the final thing we're going to build are rock nest boxes. We're going to just put that on repeat for now. It's going to take them a while to do any of that. Now the mason. <clears throat> we're going to have three things for the mason to do as well, which is blocks. We're going to want doors. And actually that'll do for now, just blocks and doors for him. And then we're going to add onto this menu we're going to add four tables and four chairs. I've done that slightly out of order. Now you see these these uh, requests here with R next to them? That means repeat. They will just do that infinitely until I tell them to stop. But they will do it in sequence. So they will make one block. They'll make one door. They'll make all of these tables and chairs. And then they'll go back to the block. So that will always be added to the back of your queue when it's done. And the reason I'm just putting those on repeat are that masons take a while to do anything because they have to haul stone from a long way away at times. I'll show you later on how to st set up a stockpile to avoid that, but for now, all of the stone's relatively close. We don't have time to do the other stuff, so we're going to let them get on with that. We still have one or two free dwarves, but we're going to be using those to lug around a lot of the stuff out of these in a moment. We will have another request or two for our carpenter, who is... The carpenter's workshop is easily the quickest and most efficient out of these starting three. And these guys have no skill. Skill affects your work in a number of ways. It affects speed and quality. So these starting ten beds will not be very good. Uh, just a high wood bed and if we view description this is a high wood bed now that might sound like it's just meh it's okay luckily your dwarves won't make really deficient bad quality things that will negatively affect people but these starting beds are not going to be super comfy but we are going to install them in these little alcoves 
in our uh, dormitory here. We're going to add one more to the list because that dorm does have uh, have room for 11 beds, not 10. I'm hoping to uh, get the dormitory set up by the end of this episode. So to build the beds, we're just pressing B and then B again for bed. And then hovering that green cursor over where we want it and then pressing enter twice. Once to select and confirm the location. Once to pick the type of bed. But I want to get that set up for you by the end of this episode. Because that will essentially be... Uh, at that point we will have a functional fort. It won't be a very good one, but it will be functional. So we're just going to bring up our Dwarf Therapist here. We're going to read it again. And you can see that the Stone Crafter has gained a level already. He's just He is going to level up real quick. By the time the people show up to uh, trade with us, he will be producing like pretty decent uh, trade goods for us to use. And uh, yeah, we'll use them in trade to buy things we can't produce early on in the game, like threads and uh, glass, gems, that kind of stuff. Basically anything we need. I normally use it to buy um, booze and food if I need it, or... Uh, Weapons, with the location we have, lacking um, the ability to make any substantial armor. We could make leather armor if we were to be able to hunt things, but um, leather is really bad in terms of armor. Like, it's no more protective than leather clothing, I don't think, which is why dwarves will, when given the leather armor uniform, will often just wear a dress or a toga as their uh, armor. Unless you specifically tell them not to. Cool. English has become a carpenter. That means that one or two of these beds at least will be slightly better. Do we have two doors yet or do we only have one? We only have one. So in the space it's taken the first guy to build all of those beds. The mason has made it through half of his stuff. So he's not doing too, too badly. But he's obviously falling behind the um, the carpenter there. Now we're nearly done with episode one. We will be once the uh, all the beds and the tables and chairs are in place. We've got one more bed to build. And then we'll have, uh, once we get the second door in place, the dorm, initial dorm will be done. He's not done with that final bed yet. There it goes. Now, any dwarf who's free will basically do hauling jobs unless you tell them not to. Now then, we have all of our 11 beds here, which is more than we have dwarves, but that's because this room is going to be a shared bedroom. For, it's basically just an overflow room to allow dwarves to sleep. So, again, we're going to press Q, which is how we interact with buildings. We're going to hover over the central bed here, press R to make it a bedroom. And then we're going to use our plus key to just fill it out. So that entire room, press enter to confirm the size. And then we're going to press D to make this a dormitory. Which means our dwarves will sleep there in a shared bedroom. They don't like that, but it's better than sleeping on the floor in the stockpile after drinking a bunch of wine and passing out. Which is what our miners did earlier on in the episode. So we're already starting to meet our most basic needs. Looks like we're still bringing things down here. Now then, something we are going to have to take care of. Now that we have a food stockpile, we'll be killing the vermin in it. And we don't want that to stay down there. It will stink up the fort and make dwarves annoyed. So we're going to press P on the surface for the stockpile. We're going to do another custom stockpile. So we're going to press C and we're going to do T again. And we're basically going to do the inverse of downstairs. This, uh, no we don't want stone. This stockpile is only going to be for bodies and like trash basically it's just a big old pile of anything that we don't want inside so we're going to want this a little ways away from the fort because we don't want people seeing it and getting upset so we're going to put it all the way over here we're going to make this 20 by 20 anything that we kill body parts that we don't use will end up up there so we're going to unpause that and also any rodents that are killed in the stockpile they'll be brought out and just dumped out in the desert 
How is our miner doing? He's going to be a little while there. Sorry, our mason. So something we are going to do on the two guys that we haven't given any jobs to yet, we're going to give them stone detailing. This is an absolute waste this early on in the game. Well, not really. We're going to tell them to smooth out the barracks. The dorm here. They're going to go around. So what we did there, we enabled stone detailing. We pressed D for designate, which is, you know, do some work. And then we pressed S for smooth stone. And all they're going to do is chip away all the sm all the rock and make the... Uh, instead of basically living in a slightly mined out cave, they're going to make that into an actual somewhat respectable room. Now this is no way necessary this early in the game. I'm just demonstrating how you do it. But it does have a benefit in that... It makes the room more aesthetically pleasing for the dwarves that are living in there, which will make them a bit happier. And uh, if you don't keep your dwarves happy, they will throw tantrums, they will break things, they will strip down naked and run around and ruin your fort. They will snap and murder people, especially if you have a military dwarf, throw a tantrum or go berserk. They'll just find the nearest thing and attack it, and, you know, that, that does not end well for you. Um, my last fortress, I had... A dwarf thrown in jail for 12 days for disorderly conduct, which was just he'd threw a tantrum, only it was a military dwarf. While he was in there, he snapped. As soon as he were released, he murdered three people and was sentenced to death. So, dwarf fortress will make uh, some pretty strange things happen from time to time. But that's, that's part of the fun, really. Now, we do have a couple more things that we want to do from our carpenter's workshop here, which is that we want to build bins. I'm going to order 10 of these. Now, bins are an item that will allow other items in your stockpile to stack. So you see this stuff here, these bracelets and mugs that our um, craft dwarf is building. The bins will allow those to be put in one tile instead of like 20 and save a lot of room in our stockpile. And I think... In a moment, you'll see uh, one of the dwarves grab a bin and start stacking up. It will also allow the blocks to be stacked. There we go. He's just picked uh, one of the miners, just put one in there. And now he's going to bed. But someone should pick up some of those items and uh, stack them all up. Some migrants have arrived. That actually happened a bit quicker than I was expecting. But this is one of the core mechanics of the game. So we're just going to give these guys a moment to pop onto the screen. And then we're going to go to our Dwarf Therapist here. We are going to set this to Migration Wave. And we're going to read and see how many we got. So we got another six. Two of whom are children. Children suck. Children are the worst. Both in real life and here. Now this guy has good woodcrafting. But we don't want any of that, really. We want to turn off everything these guys have come along with for now. Because we want to assign them our own thing. So we basically got four usable Dwarves and two useless mouths. We got beekeeping, that is amazing. I am super happy to have gotten that. He's not really good at it, but uh, it's better than having to train someone from scratch. So for now, I think all we're gonna do is leave these guys with no jobs, because next episode, we are going to assign them to some food stuff. So I wanna show you guys how to get renewable food. So for now, in fact, what we're gonna do is just throw stone detailing on these guys. Again, not really super useful to be doing this now, but it's something I like to do early on. Because I like, um... Essentially, if I were to put the tables and chairs down now, the space under them wouldn't be smoothed. I think they can smooth under beds, but maybe not. Either way, we didn't really have, uh, much choice in that. Because we needed those down for dwarves to sleep on. Once we have, uh, two more doors, we can bring the chickens and the pigs inside because they can live completely underground all of their lives and they are a great renewable resource both of them I say normally you wouldn't really need to worry too much about what I'm doing here about keeping everything kind of um, this way. Now only one chair can be used by one table, so we're just going to set these up like this. And that's going to be um, where our initial dwarves can sit down and uh, have their food. This will make this initial room basically the everything room. 
open plan living. I hear it's all the rage, especially in uh, Dwarfdom. So we're going to press R. Oh, we're, not. we're going to press Q. Hover over this table. R to make dining room. We're going to extend it out. Press enter, and we are going to not make it a meeting hall just yet because we have other animals upstairs that would starve to death down here. The pigs would be fine. The camel and the yak would not. But we now have what is essentially a very early doors, very rudimentary fortress. So that's the super bas basics covered, guys, of Dwarf Fortress. That's your embark, your preparation, and your kind of super early day one, how to get started. So I hope you join me in the next one, where we're going to cover food production and uh, animal care. I'll see you then, guys. Bye-bye.